All systems go, except for them crickets. Except for them crickets. And crickets that just think it's all cool, nice warm days. Which, by the way, I don't know if you paid attention or where where it's been, the weather's been like for you at, but uh, I don't think we've only had three seasons this year. We missed the fourth one. So we had winter, we had uh, fall, winter, spring, and we missed August. We didn't get our 110 to 115 degree temperatures for a week. I think it's going the other way already. So global warming, we're 20 degrees lower than we should have been. All you ants out there, I hope you've been working all summer. But these crickets, we're not going to do it, folks. The crickets aren't going to happen. Thinking that you know what's going on and not doing anything about it. Thinking you see the wrong, not doing anything about it. Is not going to get anything done about it, and we're going to continue to live in this nonsense. This nonsense. This insane nonsense. We got no. It seems like we have no principles in us. It seems not even the principle to arrest the wrongs that we see around us. We can talk about them, but we won't really step up to do much about it. This will be BTW RLM two eight one. Before I forget. Big cipher. So I just don't even. I just think about all the stuff that comes to me all during the week, and it's like people seem to be helpless against everything that they see is wrong against them. And yet I can. In fact, it happened this morning. Miners are being thrown out of the forest again because the Forest Service. I'm told about it. I go. It takes me five minutes while I'm preparing for this broadcast to go real quickly to remind myself if I know what the answer is. As I've been saying, you carry your bag of law with you wherever you go. The answer's in the, in the black and white that everyone wants to deny. And all you folks that have rights in the forest and go in the forest that have the property in there, you get turned away by some bureau rat who's using the, using the uh, National Guard to keep you out of the forest. And there's no law or no order that can be issued to keep you out. It takes me four, five minutes to find that back. And that's just, a, just trying to get my memory because I want to make sure I get the numbers right. Now, if it only takes five minutes to really get an answer in the law, the thing that everyone wants to deny is there to help you, we are not going to solve this problem. It's, that, it's going to be that simple. And it just, uh, just baffles me uh, that people will, well, maybe not just not listen behind the woodshed. I guess no one wants to go behind the woodshed and learn the principles they ought to get. So, even so, even though I don't get much return, and I'm uh, really seeing Minds.com, I'm, I don't know, folks. I got uh, nine people came and visit li- the views. It seems to be correlating with the tokens that they've been doing. I think I'm starting to see these social networks, no matter where you go, are a big trap. I don't care where they seem to be. There's always a problem with them, in my mind. They're to get you in and then get you registered and get you checked out and get you all induced into the next game they got going. Used to get a couple hundred in a week at mines. I'm down to nine, and that was because they came in on Sunday. Even BitChute's doing better. So there's a something going on, folks. I don't know what it is. I can't believe that there's only nine people that were interested. I can't believe that what I say is uh, something that should not be heard. I, I can believe you may not want to hear it, but that's what happens behind the woodshed, right? You don't want to hear it, but it's good for you anyway. So even though there's not very many people wanting to listen, apparently, uh, I'll, I'll tell you that I think the, we have a uh, RLM radio, Grimner, has uh, developed a, an update to the app that gets you gets you to the broadcasts. I'm not quite sure all that's involved there, but I just want to tell you about it. It's been updated now to have some more links in order to make it easy for you to get to the broadcasts. And uh, my thought was I looked at the, maybe what, what the links were, thinking about it, maybe we can add to some particular particular broadcasts that go right about right to their right to their page or right to their their, their links, uh, Grimner, as I was thinking about it, so that people can go below your logo, your Real Liberty Media logo. Maybe they can go right to the bro- broadcasts that they want to get right to. But at any rate, uh, folks, up, install it or update it. It goes an Android app that allows you to get right to the links. So I guess those are important and popular. I'm really kind of out of the loop on all this, folks. So I just, again, I, we're I'm too busy trying to figure out how to get around the oppression and occupiers. 
uh, to deal with a lot of this. I appreciate some of you guys are out there, gals are out there to do all this, but just doing, just having these things available, are, are, isn't going to solve this problem, and the problem is solved so quickly. I think, again, Jefferson Mining District, you go right there, you see the bag of law that's been there for years now. It's a, it's a bag of, of all the authorities you'd ever need as a miner. Uh, and I would say you can add, use it as a rancher, as any other property owner. As someone who has a lawful uh, uh, intent in the forest, uh, you'll find uh, something on, on, uh, on the bag, in the bag of law package that will support you in what you want to do and, and, and did completely control any agency, any thought of interfering with you. And if you don't know how to do that, then how can you expect to live in any kind of a free, free idea, uh, free uh, freedom? I hate to use the word word freedom, but how do you how do you expect to do anything and not be perpetually complaining, big whining? That's all we hear, the big whining, the gnashing of teeth, I suppose we can call it. I didn't feel like this right before I was going to get on the broadcast, but I am now. Just thinking about all the inaction just bugs me, you know, like crickets, I guess. Just a bug. So, get the Android app, folks. Tune in. I'm really not sure what they do, actually. I don't have a phone, so I don't, <laughs> don't even know what this stuff does. I think those all these tools are so, uh, so uh, vulnerable, so compromised, it's just not even worth uh, even dealing with. But it's there. As I say, we have, they do they can serve a function. If you're if you can tune in, and great. But I, I'm asking you to do more. You got to do more than just listen. You got to do more than just hear what you think is a good idea. You have to turn the stuff around. And I think people are realizing as I'm getting more and more contact with people in the emails, things come on, and I say, listen, there's a certain way to go after this, and you can't commingle all these ideas. You have to go at you have to have a really good st strategy and tactic on going after this. There's a way to do it. And so many people are just not able or not uh, understanding what that means. They think they can do it their way. They they don't. They get overwhelmed. We all get overwhelmed. If they've got this thing so far beyond us. They get us. It gets us overwhelmed. And I'm attempting. I don't think I'm doing such a good job. But I'm attempting to show you that there's a way to reduce the problem into a tangible beginning, and then you move out from there. A lot of this for us, because we weren't told of these things, a lot of this is us having to step back and get a focused knowledge, a focus, educate ourselves on some particulars that we were never told about. And that's why I tell you I'm, I'm the path finder and I'm a path pointer, where if you have a path, I can point you to where you got to go. But the problem is that I'm having to point that path means that you weren't told something that you needed, and you need it now. And that's the part that starts to become overwhelming. And I went through it all. I've been through that many, many times. Things come on you and it's just too much. So it's not like I'm unsympathetic to the problem. But to me and what I've done multiple times, having you just roll up your sleeves even higher and you just have to step forward, notwithstanding your reticence to want to go through and do it. I keep telling you, I really don't like doing this stuff. This is not what I want to be doing. But it's necessary. Second Amendment, I don't like to see it because it means that there's an ultimate wrong that happened to us again. I'd rather live in peace and have decided that. So the Second Amendment is kind of an, it's an offense, but it's necessary. It's necessary because our nature, it's our nature to be fallen, I supposedly. And we keep proving it, so I don't know what else to say about that, uh, that fact. So I better move on and get out of my mind here about how disappointed I get it as I start to see people get, see, here's my, my, my problem for you all, folks, is I see you all getting hurt, if you will, harmed and obstructed. And when I look out, most of the time I look out on some of on these topics, these subject matters, there is a quick answer that nobody seems to want to take. They'd rather sit without that information and without, as I call it, the word in your mouth in responding to an oppression. I don't know what else to say. It's that there's someone who wants to be an oppressor and you won't respond to it. Or you won't put yourself in a position where you would have to respond to it, which is okay, that's fine. But when you watch that that's harming other people and will harm you if, at some point in the future and you haven't prepared yourself, I guess is the other point. When you don't engage, you're not 
you don't have the practice you don't have the the muscle memory the mind memory on what to do and even how to start to begin to solve the problem you're overwhelmed to start with it's not like I even have every answer at the beginning like this morning somebody proposed that the Forest Service made an order issuing saying that they no one could go in the forest and I go well, that, that how are they how are they able to do that I mean just principally how are they able to do that I know my I know the highway law I already know all that stuff but okay let's go into there what's the answer so I got to step back even out of what I'm my own question, I say, well, where's the authority for their orders? What is the scope and purpose? I know what it is, but I'm going to go look at it again. And sure enough, the black and white tells you, there's a limitation to the government that's oppressing you. No one wants to seem to go find it. It's really amazing to me. And I didn't get off the, this, this point here, did I? No, I'm still dragging my feet in this problem. So let's move on. The answers are out there, folks, uh, and it's not that hard, hard to find. Yes, you've not been told how to go look, but I'm here to tell you, but set the path for you. you can, it doesn't take long. I mean, literally, folks, I just typed in the, the search engine thing for forest orders, and up pops the Forest Service site and says, this is where the orders are. I pump and punch in the button. It tells me, oh, that's uh, going to go to a certain CFR. Okay, great. That's the 261s. I know about that, so I'm on the right track. I've already read that, so I know that, but I'm still tracking whether or not I know. There's 261s. I already know in the 261s there's exemptions. Those orders don't apply to a whole list of things. One of them is minors. That took me a few minutes just to go through to find again. In fact, happens to be a court case that I helped a guy on a minor on way back when, 2009. Same set of laws. These guys, these forest bureau rats, put orders on you. These bureau rats anywhere put orders on you, and they don't have an authority for it. And everyone will whine, but no one will step up and go find, go read the black and white to say, oh, well, here it is. It says that you don't have that authority. You have an authority, but it's not over this. It's over that. Instead, I get lot, hear lots of people arguing amongst themselves over how much they know and how much this is going to be and where they got to go and all the questions and Here's the video that uh, says the guy never got to the point and the judge who knew how to run him around because the guy didn't know exactly what he was doing. Th th all this stuff's not going to help anybody when the black and white told us exactly what was going to happen. And we, in this case, we don't even have to get into that. We don't even have to be into that. Again, we avoid where we don't have to walk through. I don't even know how I'm going to get to my tab here. I want to get to my tab, but I'm so... I don't know what happened here, folks. I was going into a whole different mind, and I got into this idea. When I talk about the crickets, I guess you're really starting to bug me. Because I hear the crickets, but I don't... I like crickets normally. I hear the crickets, and I realize that tied in with the people... How people are being hurt by a Thorata when the answer is so fast to find is uh, I just wonder about us. Why would we allow that? Why would we go to somebody else on top of it? This is the other example behind this. Don't go into books and read yourself. No, go find some other authority, uh, somebody else that stands uh, somewhere that you think has the answer, who doesn't have the answer either. And then ultimately we all go where? To the Bar Association? So they'll give us the advice. And I can just tell you, left and right, front, center, top, bottom, wherever you want to look, they're not the ones that you can go to. And we've been bringing that stuff up. How this world is a global control, no matter where you look, the standard pillars are there to interfere with you. And those pillars are policy. And they're not even that. They're a concept that's imposed by a small group of people who have a great influence on everybody. Because no one wants to step up and say, the emperor wears no clothes. You're a private organization. You're a public-private partnership that's committing treason in our country, that's destroying our way of life, that allows the, the, the processes of things in order to be destroyed, take time, delay, and all these other things. Now I'll get to my tab. I just said the legal system is no good for us, and I'm going to read you something right here that someone got some vindication. Well, it was a vindication only through a jury, and even those are tampered with, as I've explained to you in the past. I've explained really all of this stuff. It's just another way to get at it. So we get a little vindication of a harm, but understand that this 
the bar association, the legal system, is what gets us in through how the agencies impose these rules and the allowance for businesses to harm us. And we have to go through the process. We're not, we don't get the precautionary principle applied to us. Uh, nature and the agenda does, but we don't. And we have to suffer harms. And we have to hope when we get there a jury of our so-called peers, our commerce buddies, are going to find for us. Jury rules Monsatan liable for weed killer case. I'm not even going to use this for the fact, it's already been old news, I think I've heard lots of people talk about it, that Monsatan was found liable by a jury awarding $289 million to Dwayne Lee Johnson uh, over a cancer cause claim he made against uh, glyphosate. Pretty impressive here, folks. This is a big deal. But I'm not worried about the guy who, who finally gets a jury to listen to, to him and having to go through the court case and produce the evidence. This evidence and this shows a whole lot of what I've reported behind the woodshed that these industry, the, thing, these industry types do, handshaking too close, uh, too conflict of interest with the agencies, the revolving door. Now, that's what I want to focus on more when you read a case like the jury of rules Monsatan liable in weed killer case and the guy got cancer as a gardener of some kind of gardener who had to use the product all the time. We want to now look not because of what that case does, we want to say we want to find out how the case got here where the industry and where the agencies of the government supposedly, purportedly, ostensibly to protect you failed. And this is where I'm asking you all to get some Without jeopardy, you get, to, you get to exercise your process of engaging with those that will harm you and those around you, you and your family, your friends. This is the, one of the only ways I understand how to get you back involved with what you need to start to understand how to think against people that are oppressing and harming you to a point where today we finally get to the point where everybody understood once they found out what glyphosate was, and it's not just that either. It's the other thing that galls me a bit. Remember, there's inert ingredients with a product called Roundup that are thousands of times more harmful than, uh, than glyphosate. Glyphosate is a, is a descaling agent. It's like a solvent for minerals. So in a way, that's not really, that's really on its face, on its surface, not, not too, too threatening in a way. I mean, all, any acid will do that. Any base will do that, depending on what it's up against. But this has some peculiar things it does in a in a physiognomic system, and that's the problem. And so this jury comes on; it finds the cancer is a cause. I don't know where this is going to go in appeal, and I assume they're going to appeal. This is such a big ruling; I, I can't imagine they're not going to appeal. They're a big company with lots of money to do this. But if you look, I want you to be a cognizant of this case because in this case is the information from a, in an evidentiary place that you can collect up to say and show an agency or a decision maker, this is what this system is doing and it harms us and you have a duty to protect us. And what you start setting the stage for is the dereliction of that duty and they're not, they're not immune to that. And if nothing else, if we start getting more people start understanding how to use this information, not the fact of the win of the jury trial and the award, but the information from that was put in evidence that was accepted by the jury on how you're being harmed inside the system that's there, and you bring that to that system and start talking about it, getting it in the public, if, putting it back in the public space. That public becomes that massive educated, hopefully educated, uh, resistance to this uh, problem that they start to act become more vigilant to it, and then finally we, we push through the problem. A few of us are not going to do this. It's clear to me now. That was clear to me when I helped to show how the mining district could be relevant again. We, I talked to a few people. We gained some momentum, got some interest, had a few hundred people, miners, show up uh, to a meeting, establish a mining district, and then attempted to put together the purpose of the mining district. And when it came to have to do something, the the majority of the assembly evaporated. But for a small ham, ham, handful of dedicated miners, 
pushing in a pop in what appears to be the more proper position condition because we're actually making some headway now is the only thing that's actually doing anything where the point was the microcosm of the miner having all the power and the rights within the context of his uh, livelihood did not want to take on that gauntlet did not was not practice enough was so awkward in even presenting his own cause that they walk away so awkward in the use of a simple statue it takes five seconds, actually, five minutes. If you remember this point, you wouldn't even have to go search it. I do it just to make sure I, they haven't changed something. Just verify the latest, the latest and the greatest and see if it's changed. If not, then I get to run with what I thought I knew or adjust it. In this case, it didn't change. It took five minutes to find out that there was no authority in the oppression. And as I tell you, once you start to see this, okay, what does that mean? Well, it's a couple of things, and it depends on how you want to push it. I mean, part of my mind goes, we need to, we can make a real big stink about this, but I don't have the, the time or energy. I've got so many things that are going on. I wish we had more people that understood what I do. And this is the mass of vigilance that would be out there pushing back against what's going on. This cancer case from Monsatan, now bought up by Slayer, and the Monsanto name's going away, so you're not going to have that anymore, is indicative of an, a systemic problem that's killing you. Not just, Monsanto's an easy pinata here, okay? There's other companies. We don't even hardly talk about them. Dye Chemical, Syngenta. Come on. They're out there. They're all harming us. They're harming us by the system that they've learned, their people, their their, their legal uh, advisors have learned how to insinuate themselves in and get what they need. And they did it counter to you. And they did it counter, when you look very carefully, even to the way it was supposed to be done. And when I found that, I tell you now, that is how you club them to death eventually. They, in every case, you'll find they do it wrong. Why don't you want to embrace that part? Why do you just complain and let them continue to beat you like a baby seal? Poison you like whatever other caterpillar they want to think that they're controlling. And then that clouds the real important work that science could do or real efforts to do that wasn't bottom line uh, tailored but more to the function. And we might actually see that balance we're told has to come in the rule. It was supposed to be in the world. Remember, the NEPA, the federal guidance uh, given through uh, through Congress, is were to have what? I said it in the last couple broadcasts. We're to have productive, enjoyable harmony with ourselves and nature. If you're complaining, that ain't enjoyable. Well, unless you're a complainer. Maybe you're a hypoc hypochondriac. I don't know. I don't, can't imagine lots of people I hear that way. But if, I guess if you really like to complain, I guess it's okay. I guess that's enjoyable that you want to complain. I'd have to think about you, wonder about you, but that's not for me to really say, is it? No, we're supposed to have productive and enjoyable harmony in na with our nature. And our nature includes the nature. We're from it. We're not separate from it. We're not antagonistic to it. But this is the whole nonsense that they put up. All these agencies now we relate to through that. That's what sustainable development I've been talking about. It's all the same process. I don't care where we go. It's all the same process that they're doing to defeat you. And it's all because your silence, your cricket, the idiom of the cricket, the silence, is pervasive here. And it's so easily, yeah, I said it, Vince, denounced in the, in the at least in the beginning. It takes a little while longer. The momentum is against it to overthrow it. Because of the things that allowed Monsatan to put a product, a product in the world that they lied and said it would. In fact, I got another thing that came in through the Twitter. It's all in your food now. There's actually a, a meme going on now. They said it was not persistent, folks. They said it was not persistent. How did it get in our food? This is the problem. They've allowed, there's something that broke in our system and there was no vigilant mass to actually focus on. Oh, you'll complain about all this stuff. You'll complain now there's glyphosate, but you won't. And I'm asking you to do this because as we move on, you'll see. I'm asking you to look at this problem and stop complaining and put some time into this to take up the evidence that's in the news, in the notice to us, where to go find it, and then go back. Letter writing is really all this is. 
stick it back in their face and say, you're going to do better. You're going to do better. And you do it in substantial ways, not just as a complaint that's defeated in the process. In other words, you, as I have a friend doing, wrote a, meet, a, a smart meter letter, uh, can't get a group of people that want to do it right, to do it. They'll just fight him left and right. I said, well, then you do it. And he wrote his letter like I suggested that he would. He went to the place. He went to the statute, found it in, okay, I had to guide him there. He went there. Within five seconds, he saw the words. He saw the first four or five words that were the savings clause. He throws out his letter. He throws in how the problem was, was not done. It's not at the company side. It's not at the, the power company side. It's at the agency subverting your due process side. Now, he wrote the letter. He sent it in. He puts in a couple of other things about the smart meter, and he showed that the utility commission, see, it's not the company, the utility commission had done something that violated their own APA, the Administrative Procedures Act. And guess what, folks? The power company stepped in and said, well, that's right, not because of the letter, but I know they got a copy of it. We're, we, don't, we want to now petition to drop the fees for opting out. That's still the wrong answer, but it's a half-right answer. See, they'll still let you opt out, but now they're not going to charge you because that was one of the charges against the imposition because of the violation of the APA violating the, the Constitution. Am I talking about Monsatan here? Am I talking about the power company? Am I talking about the end producer or the, um, the commerce pro uh, generator? No. Well, I'm talking about your agencies done doing it wrong within the context of the rules they're supposed to. And they're doing it wrong by trying to subvert your laws by putting in a dispute resolution process that you can go in right there and you tell them that they violated the law when they violated that process and they violated the law in your substantial rights. And they don't have a right to do that. I'm going to the government agency that was put in there. I'm not talking about Monsatan. I'm not talking about PPLL, PPLG, whatever the heck the utility company is. That's up to you. In fact, as a power power company utility customer, you have probably the only standing to go after that. And since I believe anybody listening to me would be a power company customer, if none of you have looked at that and sent your letter in, why are you complaining? I'm talking directly upon the process in the state regulator that adopts the federal funding imposition upon you. That's not going after the federal funding problem or the FCC the standards that they're using or none of that. That's stopping them local in your, inside your state. Likely, they have violated these provisions in your APA. So if you're fighting in the wrong field or on the wrong point or making the wrong argument, you're getting the right answer, which is nothing's going to respond to you. And you think it's because the law has not worked, when in fact it was put on us because of the way the system is. You have to assert the rights you have or you don't have them. That's not my rule. Let me tie it over to the thing that got me off for the first 15, 20 minutes of this broadcast. Miner goes up on the forest when there's a forest fire, has to pass through an old burn area they're mopping up, and he's told he can't go in. Well, if he had in his bag of law Part 261, he'd have showed him the Part 261.1A3 would say that what he does is exempt from that order. Not be threatened by a, the Forest Service a bureau rat and a, and a, a military officer, a military grunt at the, at the National Guard to be sent out of the forest to go talk to someone else who didn't. No, you'd have the bag of law, you'd have relative to your subject matter what the things were they were supposed to happen that didn't happen. You'd write that down. And so just to show you, uh, just to explain it works, partially at least, and that there's a continued pressure because they resist where they can. The letter went in, all of a sudden now they're going to kick, it, the, the company steps into its own own petition to the to the uh, unit utilities co company. We don't want to charge the opt-out fee because we, in the letter said it, it was felony theft and extortion. We don't want to do it. So they come in and say, we don't want to charge the opt-out fee. Well, that means that the opt-out the opt is still there, and the opt-out is a violation because it is an alternative chosen by the utility com uh, commission without due process. 
without actually comporting with the with the APA by going to dispute resolution first. And so my problem with all this is it's like continuing the self-inflicted wound. We won't address the things the right way or even in a way that gives us an opportunity to actually prevail because it's never been done before. They've never seen this kind of stuff before. This is stuff of, can I say I invent these things? This is how we attack these people. I look for the savings provisions. I look for the limits, and I say, you exceeded those limits when you didn't do this, 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 and this, and this. And there's a certain way to say that. Dealing with the fires. We're not going to, don't attack restoration as a tool. It's actually destruction. Don't attack it there. You get too much resistance. Just say their use of the tools exceeded the limit. Go ahead and give it over to them, but say they can't use it in exceedance of a limit. And then identify the limit. And now they're stuck. How hard is that? You had an obligation to con constrain your activity to this, and you jumped over to this without taking these interim steps. That's a due process violation, which violated some other rights as well. We can go ahead and list those if we want. Why can't anybody speak like that? I just, I just gave you the formula on how you defeat all this stuff, and I just, I hear crickets, or I hear I hear words, I hear gnashing of teeth, I hear complaints. Oh, we can't do nothing about it. Oh, what, I don't got the time. Oh, oh this and that and the other. I, I said, folks, if you got 15 minutes. And you finally get, and I know it'll take a little while to orient yourself, but once you get oriented, I just told you it took five minutes to get the answer on how to keep a miner in the forest. I'm not asking them to go out there and get in the way. Absolutely not. I'm saying no. If you can pass through a spot that's only being uh, that's being managed for fire on top of it, uh, you have the right to pass through. Those highways are in the state law, not the count, not the federal bureau rat to stop, not the national guard is supposed to protect you. That doesn't even know that. Yeah, sorry, Vince. I just went off on this thing, and I just not—it's not relieving in me. I just—I'm trying to get onto the next thing. I hope you appreciate that. It's saying that I—I'm uh, yeah, on fire, huh? Doing my own burn. I just get frustrated every once in a while here, folks. I guess it's today's the day I'm going to be a little frustrated because here's what it does, and this is what my problem is. Until we have a bunch of people that are really hitting this hard, and not getting into the what I see the meme wars that go on between uh, different factions now because we've divided ourselves while that's happening underneath the war the smoldering war of non -act, non proper acti action people are getting hurt ddt linked to increase in autism risk in a new study you like that segue folks hey, i get back to it i can get to it i just got to think about it see what happens when we don't do it right we it takes time for people who are actually looking at all this stuff to find out that it's harmful, something that passed through. Now, DDT is kind of an obvious one. They had to, they took it out a long time ago, but it's still, they're still studying it. So it's still around in other countries. The United States may not be the only one that uses it. So there's people studying this. But over time, you find that the promotions of the industry with the best science has not protected us. He certainly didn't protect the, the guy that the jury found caused the cancer. There's a whole other process around that that people are still arguing whether or not the jury got it right. And this is the problem. There's nothing set and certain. And when there's nothing set and certain, it's completely walking on eggshells no matter where you go. And nothing certain is really not a good way to have it in a society. I just say that. But now we find DDT is linked to increased autism. So we have a problem within the system, another evidence. First of all, we have a, an interesting way to look at this, as I've been telling you. It may not be, let's say, glyphosate that's causing this, but what it does in the body does help to cause something. Well, that's, I think, what happens in this report, if I remember this, and uh, I apologize a little bit. There's so many things, again, it's getting ahead of me. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I see the story, and I see what I remember, what a little bit of what I want to talk about. I don't get into the particulars on this, and I forget a little of the details, but the study builds on previous evidence that environmental toxic, and that the environmental toxic is linked uh, to developmental impacts in children exposed in utero, and is significant as autism rates keep growing in the U.S., now, I'm going to stop there. I don't want to get, you want to read this, you want to find out how to do this. I'm saying here's another report exp exposing you that the fact of the agencies that allowed it and allowed it into the system and don't stop it and don't really enforce to stop it are, are now finding that they're, stop they're causing the autism that everyone wants to blame on other things or whatever. And this is a, needs to be known. The autism rates are going up. My question about this is, but I thought we weren't using DDT that it should be a problem. 
And so we got to look at through this and kind of go through some of this stuff. There's some things that come into the into our system, whether that's a any system that could interfere with another process, and that's that process in failure or in imposition or in demand or or load upon it that causes the failure. And this is the subtle. This is where the lawyers play. Well, we didn't really cause it. It was caused by this other thing. Well, but your product helped that other thing, which did cause it. And so we have this legalism that starts to come in, that if we don't start to order this up, as I see, if we were to stop this thing in the administrative side, and I gave you the reference to the smart meters, it took one letter and other companies coming in. See, the company doesn't want to do this some of this as well either, we find out. They took the first opportunity to not want to be the felon in thieving this money uh, with uh, their own petition behind a letter that... I know, I know a, a colleague of mine wrote. Now we get to turn. Now we got one down, one pin down. Now we're going to go for that last pin standing. The last pin is the fact that the utilities commission didn't do it at all right. That's what you're looking for in trying to show what these agencies, whether it's a local state uh, commission that's imposing federal law or the federal authority giving the guideline guidance, is how it's how you go attack that. You find out where within the process it's been failed. That's a little bit of what dispute resolution does in the alternatives. They try to cover that over. The, folk, the fact is the dispute resolution is a failure of due process. It, by definition, it's a crime against you. <laughs> it's pretty fascinating. They allow that in the code, but it's, a, it's an agreement. It's an opening for a consent that lets you bring you outside of what protects you. And because everyone wants to fight with this, there's no law, this, that, and the other. I don't agree with that. That's how they're taking this down. You don't understand that there's actual, this stuff is the objective basis. It's not the necessarily the imposition that, I don't deal on the imposition side because I get rid of all the imposition. I deal with it on the side that the, says that there was a limit to the government and you were, and they, not you, but the, they were supposed to follow certain things and they didn't. And when they didn't, now they're bringing on the harms. And so here, we have a cause, potential cause and effects, DDT in utero, causes autism. I don't know why it's increasing. I thought we stopped using DDT. Maybe not, folks. Maybe not. Maybe something's out there like DDT. And so we have a contender now, and maybe and this is another problem. We have a contender against vaccines, don't we, or the causation for autism. Or are we seeing another correlation that could point to the fact that something in there is acting like DDT in a vaccine? It's up to us to start getting involved because they're not going to do it. And you're, and you're, likely your son or your grandson is going to be affected by these kinds of interactions. But look how long it takes. The reticence to stop stuff. Again, if I'm going to go to the sustainable development, I want to be, I want to enjoy the precautionary principle where I want to enjoy it. And this is one of those areas. Don't come to me with your science that says you can't show where this is harmful. And don't tell me that you can't show that it's harmful because we don't know the system. Uh, they know impliedly that means they won't never be able to prove it. But why can't I rely on that? Why can't I look down at my plate anymore and wonder how much gut bacteria is being destroyed and what kind of what that uh, disease is going to pop up that needed that gut bacteria? Why do I? I mean, that's how I look. I look at my plate and go, what am I eating here? I don't even know what I'm eating anymore. I think I should be free of having to worry about it. I never had to think about it before. This is now into the time of modernization and food security and food safety. Are you kidding me? Exactly what they're imposing on us. That's the whole point. I'm not free to enjoy my food where I start seeing everything has got things in it that I don't want to have to deal with it. I don't want it in my food. I don't care what it doesn't prove or does prove. I just don't want it there. How's that? Where did that go? Where did my right to not have to associate with that go? Well, it went through this dispute resolution process that the agencies know to put on. It comes inside the law. I told you that the, uh, the uh, law universities have students who the projects are to write code, write, uh, write legislation that comes in pieces and parts. And there's some people, the lawyers on the inside of the system, know to assemble all that into what they need it for. It comes at you looking pretty good, but when they assemble all the pieces, it's a it's a transformer. It transforms under the, the the management of the oppressor, which happens to be this one of them is the bar association, which I keep pointing to you, 
in the documentation. This is not this is not a conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy fact. They've come together. That in their documents, they will declare how they want to destroy you. The problem is they do that statement most transparent to you. All you have complained about is the effect of what they're doing. They're the cause that you haven't figured out. They're like this two-step thing. They're looking like a law, and they're actually creating things that then do the harm. You don't look at them. I do. You don't. And for some reason, I do, and I don't really have the problem with the, with dealing with it that a lot of people who don't do have a problem with when I try to explain how to go after this. The U.S. Appeals Court orders EPA to ban pesticides said to harm children. Said to harm is really an interesting point right there in the title. But here we have again the EPA, and this is a little bit of the politics coming on. The EPA is really no good at all, uh, we'll just say that uh, right up front, but they do have this standard that they put out, and there's this administrative process that has to go on in order to comport with due process in the administrative side. The U.S. Appeals Court, in a jurisdiction that has no jurisdiction, but no one, this is what's lost in all this story, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has no jurisdiction because its only jurisdiction is over the territorial courts called the United States District Courts, and those aren't Article Three courts. So all this is an internal uh, dialogue with the federal government through these courts here. But everyone, no one understands this. I talk about it. Not much. A few of you went out and researched the fact of it uh, on the Twitter. I, I talked a little bit about that. Some, some of you took up this gauntlet and went and did a research, and, and you found what you found. You found exactly what I was telling you. But anyway, U.S. Appeals Court orders the EPA to ban pesticide said to harm children. You know, an environmental group did this, and more power to them in that regard. But they forced the, an administration, whoever's it was, and they all make a violation. Well, you mean DDT still in the environment to cause autism? What do you What do you mean that the Monsatan just got hit for Roundup that allowed this, some agency in the back to back back some time to to allow it? Now we come to the EPA not doing something. Now oh, it's Trump's associates. No, no, this is the way these associates, these agencies work. No one challenges their authority either, and then they run them into courts that have no competency at all. But let's go with the decision, a two-to-one, Ninth Circuit, United States Court of Appeals in Seattle overturned the former EPA administrator, Scott Pruitt's March 2017 denial, denial of a petition by environmental groups to halt the use of chlorpyrifos in uh, food crops such as fruits, vegetables, and nuts. This shows the EPA can't just ignore the science that this pesticide damages children's brains Marissa Odornia, a lawyer for the Earth Justice, with repre which represented the petitioners, said in an interview, quote, the Trump administration has to follow the law, as does everyone else. That case is the statement, that's what you want to go in, that yes, they have to follow the law, that's what I'm talking about. Go follow the law, not the circumvention of the law, which is dispute resolution. In this case, remember, Earth Justice are the same ones that used the Indian lands in Dapple as the stocking horse to push through their nonsense. So these are the same people that are doing this, but they actually found, and this is what I was trying to tell the Dapple people to do, find the administrative failure and attack that. They did. The court said, yeah, you can't, you can't not do that. You have to follow that. That's all this case really says. So here's an authority of what I'm telling you. When you focus in on the administrative procedures of this, your chances go way up to keep the constraints on the agency, which, as we now see the proof in the history, doesn't care that it's allowing things into the so-called environment, even if you give it credit, the environmental protection. It's not protecting the environment. The environment it's protecting is the bottom line and sustainable development. Remember that. They're the <laughs> they are the one pillar protection in the United States for environmental considerations, which is sustainable development. That's the destruction of your way of life. I hope you're getting this when I talk to you about it like that. You always have to have this other thought. This is a counterintuitive approach. They're attacking us in ways that really seem that they're insane because they don't come by a natural process. They're unnatural to us. And when you understand that, I don't have to buy into that process. I do have to think about how they're um, implementing it so that I can start to defeat it. I can dismantle it. The fastest way to dismantle it is in the very short clauses that are thrown in. Only a few words are used to do the protection. They're called savings clauses. 
the prohibitions, the provided that statements. That's what I read for, among other things. And it's not that hard. I, people can read stuff me over the phone, and I can tell them where they need to go. It's, this stuff is not that hard. you just got to get the ear to hear it. And it's, it comes really quickly, and I see lots of people would rather spend all the time griping instead of just taking, just shutting all that down and going and finding something to focus on and look, working it through. Just work it through. Get experience to do that. And pretty soon you look out in the whole world, whole of the world, you start, you're able to parse through this stuff really quickly. So here we have again the EPA supposed to do protection that was supposedly supposedly there says there's science that does this. I'm going to go with it because I don't want to see anybody harmed by a, a product that doesn't ta that, that doesn't that promotes that it's supposed to do something but then harms everybody. That doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know why that's such a hard thing to understand. You have to even even these earth justice attorneys have to go through this nonsense to get there. It should tell you something about how screwed up this whole thing is. But to me, it's uh, cleaned up pretty fast when you start focusing on what the procedures are supposed to do. I tend to focus on the land, the law of the land. And that makes it even quicker because that's got another. That's not a discretionary thing to the to the agency. That is determined by your contract with the acceptance of the congressional act mandating. If you so, when I'm talking about this stuff, and you and your folks are thinking of things, if you are thinking of things, you have to keep cognizant of the authorities that come to bear in any particular subject matter. When we're into discussions of EPA granting something, that's in the discretion, and the Chevron case gives them like almost complete control. That's defeatable, too, because you've got to look at what that is. But at any rate, that's a, that's a smaller section. But this is that's, it's on the discretion of the bureaucrat. In this case, that's a lot tougher to beat, but can be built, the case hat can be built, you're seeing how it's done, you're seeing the responses to it, you see that it can be checked in the administrative side that's not in actually the law of the land side, the disposal of the land where your actual grants and patents and state law transition underneath property protection become. That's why I like to I focus a lot more on that because it's a lot, a lot easier to defeat an agency that way. And in the case if you get into the, when you see a property that they're not supposed to, defi to, de to destroy in you, and this is what my colleague did with the with the smart meter. Part of the provision of not a, of the utility com commission applying dispute resolution without the, the the savings clause was that it defeated him in a constitutional property that he right a pro constitutional provision that recognized a property in him. So we were able to get to the non deferential condition the non-opinion condition, even in an administrative context. And I, I don't know how many people listen to me. Maybe I'm talking over you, beyond you again, but I, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. This is what this is our problem. If you think I'm talking beyond you, you're, not, you're having trouble keeping up, or you kind of get what I'm saying, but you don't know where to go look in the law to find that part, you, that's why we're having our trouble. Because this is supposed to be something that was in us as a people. It used to be in us. It used to be in us. It's been out. Of, it's been washed out of us, and that's why partly I don't, you know, I don't go stomp crickets. I just identify they're there. I, I, I've only put it up once, like on Twitter. I was in for some cricket stomping fun, you know. Listen behind the woodshed. I, I've said it once. I think it's it's fun. I mean, okay, it's a it's a fun thing to say, but I don't really mean I want to go stomp crickets. I want you all to understand that that's your inaction, your silence is what it, the idiom means, and you need to turn that around if you expect to see anything change, and if you ever expect to stop complaining. And those of you that don't want to stop complaining, I have to, I worry about you. Seriously, I worry about you. There's an illness there that needs to be addressed, and it may not be the one you think I'm talking about when I'm talking to you about it. Again, there's causations of things that cause us to do other things, and we're not even aware of it. Those are the things that are exploited in us. That I say, if you read the Protocols of the Elder Design, you'll see that they're right there, and they're being exploited all the time. And see, the point is, it's not that they're not exploitable. It's that you know that they're exploitable, and now you can put up guards to protect it, or protect against it. 
as best as you can. And that comes with time. You get more and more fortified about how that works and how to identify it. So you don't even, you don't even let that come close. You don't even let those things happen. You become more refined in how you approach things. You become more steadfast in a position that you know is protected on the narrow path and protectable from the narrow path. And that's why it's harder to go in the agency side, but why I tell you all the time to go in the agency side. Because it's no jeopardy to you there. And if you find the property and can find the property that's in you that's violated, then you have them by the throat. Because they... Typically, you'll find the savings provision, the limitation that they should never, they could never, they had no right to, no authority to go and do that. They could if they got your your silence. They could if they got your consent somehow. They could if you entered in and whined and cried about certain things that they've made, that they didn't tell you that they made standards that they prefer over yours. And then you didn't go argue that, that preference caused a problem that they're not looking at, and they didn't have a right to do that. And so we, I see for as much as we chat and talk and do all this stuff, we really don't know how to chat and talk. We don't know how to assert our, uh, what we are to do in the first place, and we are been educated into allowing ourselves to be apathetic, uh, whiners, dysfunction, uh, acceptors, and allow our behavior to be controlled where that control needs us to go. As I've been telling you, this is what the sustainable development's about. Your behavior. Like getting onto these phones, they get your phone, you get all these things in the, in the technology. The technology is compromised. The systems around the technology is compromised. And everyone seems to be really, really slow to change stuff. Why is that? And we get this kind of thing. For those of you that think the technology, the digital future, again, we're back to a, the problem of the government in a utility sense, allowing these conditions without putting regulations to protect against it. And this becomes the problem if they start exposing the vulnerabilities. You may not start using that very much, or you're going to put less credibility in a, a tool, a weapon against you, is these phones. AT&T sued for SIM hijacker steals $24 million in customers' cryptocurrency. A SIM hijacking... It's called port. Uh, it's called a port out scam. It involves a hijacker hijacking your phone number, porting it over to their own device, often with a wireless carrier employee's help, and then taking control of your personal accounts. And when they do that, they take account of your account. If you got a, a wallet, and they know about that, they steal your what's in your wallet, folks. Why is that in your phone? And so the working with the employees and or some idiosyncrasy within the system of registry for these SIM cards in your phones to steal your stuff. And apparently that's so okay, the company did not respond un even until it's been sued. Is this forward-looking problem? That, that we are in the system now. We're allowed to be harmed. And we have to come after, we have to be smart enough to stay away from it, I would hope, but we're not. And then we try to, then we get at this thing that's called a remedy, supposedly, to sue the company, get back in with the, the bar association uh, members, and they get to chew this thing up and take your funds and take it and make the policy they want by their decisions, handing it over to a judge. It's part of them. It all wants this system to be going down the technocratic rat hole. No, no offense to rats. So AT&T customers, this process of the SIM hijacking, working and porting over your accounts, is a method vulnerability built into your digital systems. And if you're going to look in the future and keep them being silent, and they keep forcing on you like this smart meter thing is being forced on everybody, all that stuff, that 5G is all being forced, all this stuff to build the infrastructure and capacity building to keep you oppressed, put you in shared prosperity, well, they don't have a violation against apparently doing this and having all your money in cryptocurrency stolen. Shows that you need to be careful on what you're doing with the cryptocurrency, if anything at all. And I keep, really, I'm looking at these vulnerabilities, again, just so you hear it, I'm not against the technology of, of the cryptocurrency. I think that's pretty cool. I wish I, I, if I could trust it more, I probably would be into it. Be, uh, it, it would answer a lot of problems for me. But because of the major vulnerabilities and what I believe to be the major surveillance system that's going on, I've just decided that it would be like Facebook. I just won't touch it right now. 
I want to touch it. I want to do some stuff. I see some cool things. But like I said, I, sometimes I gotta, I've got to not do something that I want to do or do something that I don't want to do. Maybe I'm starting to grow up a bit. As I getting close to the foot, starting to go toward the grave, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm getting there. And we're talking in the chat room. Grimner saying about how something about a book, how I book, is answering something in the chat in a in a in the game they play, the trivia game. I I, I didn't get the question because I came in and it was already in. And I said, well, I don't book as quick as I used to. And his response was that none of us do. And there you are. That's where it's going, folks. So we can complain and we can keep complaining. We're going to complain until we're not here, and then our complaint will be gone. That's how this system continues to work instead of us focusing on what the problem is. This is a serious issue, the SIM hijacking. But this is a vulnerability that you're accepting when you get into this. And it takes a lawsuit against AT&T. I'm asking you to be considerate. Don't put things of value in the digital realm. I guess is the main point here. Unless you want to be ready to go sue AT&T or some other carrier. I don't know what the salvation is, but do you want to bring yourself vulnerable to that? And then here's the other thing. If we don't saw, if there is a nice, cool thing, I mean, the, tech, the good side of the technology, we can never get there because we have these things that are built hard-baked into the system. Like I tell you, the hard-baked into the sili silicon is no good. You can't get, software can't fix that, and they're finding that out. I, something I was telling you back in January, a, a high-techy girl figured it out. She goes, well, if this is what's going to happen, uh, we might as well just go home. And I, I said, thank you for recognizing that. You can't fix this problem. Not yet. Not the way they're dragging their feet. And it's I say they're it's planned that way. And so we better get smart ourselves, get intelligent, and we better start making that, get back to that parallel universe we, we used to exist in that was actually natural to us. Not virtual, but natural. So all this, the phones are vulnerable, they're compromised, they're tied into a system that's compromised, and you want to see you have a right to avoid the system, the bottom line, to make it easier for them, uh, then you can listen to this little case. And this is an interesting case because I, I think inside it are indicators of part of the problem with how people perceive what's going on and what they think other people are doing to try and protect them. And the negative inference that is developed and created when those people you thought were fighting for you fail to make the mark that you thought should be made. And this becomes a, a real key problem I see. And I, don't, I try not to let it uh, get to me at all. I look, and that's why I look for the problems. That's why I tend to be more of an optimist in a way. I mean, I think it's all going down to, to hell in a handbasket, tell you the truth. But, but I'm an optimist that it's all... Our very next choice, all of our very next choice in the right way, in the right place, in the right function, it will fix this. And that's the interesting, that's the precipice we stand on. It, that's the uh, the old serial movie, uh, serial program. We're waiting for the next the foot, the shoe to drop. And it doesn't have to drop. And it doesn't have to drop by all of us just not letting, allowing it. All for the right reason, not the griping. Federal court rules against consumers on state smart meters and privacy rights was the title of an article. Um, it, okay, so this is notice to us. Uh, someone who analyzes this, someone who writes upon this, and I, I don't know what to say in part about this. I do appreciate his delineating the facts of the case. I'm not so sure I agree with his analysis of the case because I believe when I look in this case and the answers the judge gave, I think they're talking about the thing I say you need to do instead of what was done. And what was done turns out to be the heading here that you hear federal court rules against consumers and smart meters and privacy rights. One of the headlines, and I'm only going to go through a couple of the highlighted portions here for this, there are limitations that caught my mind to tell you about. Again, not the news about this, but what do we do with this news? What is it telling us in our actions? If we're interested in the problem of these smart meters and the enveloping cage that's being built by them and the harm that appears to be happening and the disregard of all that, how are we supposed to stop this when we get these kinds of, of answers 
uh, when we get from the courts, and it looks like you said the courts are not not functioning very well to protect you. Well, they may not be, but when I look at them and say, well, there's a wrong avenue taken, it looks like to me, maybe we should reset ourselves and look and see the wrong avenue that was taken and just not go there, set up a better one. As I just told you earlier about my colleague writing the letter that attacks the state decision, the state agency utility commission decision, to allow certain implementations of the smart meter from federal funding attack how they get, how they came to that that uh, decision by the and identify the failure of due process is a jurisdictional attack if you for those of you listening and understanding you've said that you said oh that was a jurisdictional attack for those of you that didn't think about it I'm telling you that's what it is you're attacking their authority to make that decision that a decision that cannot be identified without authority is void no, you're not going to hear that in this case, and that's one of my problems with it. So this is my mind working. This is what I'm bringing to this story when I read this guy whose intent, this author, is it, he's into this. Like I said, he documents some facts about the case that I do appreciate to see. I'm not so sure, though, that I would follow his reasoning about what happens, because that's, that's as opinionated as the judge. It's as guided and misguided as the, he says the judge would be on certain issues. The judges here with an appeals court, there's a few of them, a couple of them, would be without fully even take, bringing the information together and correctly analyzing it. But he says, there are limitations to the court ruling where it indicates that our, quote, holdings depends on particular circumstances of this case. That's what I read, the third point that calls my attention to, maybe I'm not wrong in what I'm telling you here regarding an approach and a strategy and, a, and the, the requirements of doing things. This is only particular to this case, so let's not get so grandiose as to say this applies across the board. Maybe this really isn't the consumer smart meter the privacy rights attack. In this case it might be, but really was it when you look at the case and what they decided on? Added commentary by the author is this court ruling appears merely to have had the effect of advancing the district court opinion of deemed consent for data collection to an appeals court opinion of deemed legitimate government interest for data collection. Either way, smart meter privacy invasions continue to occur just now as the unofficial government, governmental search. When I saw that, I, that, what came to my mind, and I hope it came to yours, when you ask the wrong question, you're going to get the right answer. But within that observation is two points of, th of interest for me of something, something I've talked to you. How did they come up with this deeming, but the court come up with this, had to be from what was decided at the state commission level. And then my question is, was it brought up then? And maybe there was a process that subverted the ability under a favor, favoring dispute resolution instead of the law or being unless prohi provided or prohibited provision, the unless prohibited provision, was not given assertion. And so they just ran with it. That's Those two points are built right here in this gentleman, this author, is a, what was his name? K.T. Weaver. I don't discredit him as far as his interest. I'm just wondering, do we see a, inside his own statements uh, an ability to address these problems differently? Because if you go this path, you're definitely not going to get, go there. But within his decision, his own observations, he's telling me the way I look at it, there's an administrative condition that pre-exists pre, pre this thing that the court was actually talking to. And so if we're not reading this, these, these notices to us with that awareness, I, we miss, I think we miss a whole lot. I know I would be missing a whole lot. If I didn't read for these awarenesses, I wouldn't be able to do maybe most of what I, what I do. Once the court concluded that a governmental search is being conducted on its residents every 15 minutes, it further analyzed whether such a search is reasonable and thus permissible. Fourth Amendment says reasonable searches and seizures, unreasonable searches and seizures, right? So now that you've given a, a, discernment, a, a decision making capacity into the court to decide is this reasonable or not, now you have a standard to meet. And they bring up this balancing condition. But it's because you're asking the court to decide, is this a search that's lawful or not? And I'm saying it's not even there. 
You don't get there if you do the process right. Because that's decided and given the answer, and you'll be deciding, you'll be challenging the answer if this was decided in the proper order. The court cites that, quote, since the searches are not performed as part of a criminal investigation, we can turn immediately to, the, to an assessment of whether they are reasonable by balancing its intrusion into the individual's Fourth Amendment interests against its promotion of legitimate governmental interests. This is very important to understand. You come with these rights, they've been now given balance in the Constitution, been given balance against a governmental interest. In my mind, that says you live in a prison. But moving on. So you have to have the mind of what they're going to come with the governmental interest that's legitimate. Which means you have the ability, it's a presumption, if you have the ability to refute this legitimacy. But that's a decision based, based in, the, in the bar member, right? The judge. But this is also conditioned on a criminal, a, a criminal application. And the other side, the city that's imposing this, and this is the other thing about this case. This is a private city power company. And this is the problem with privatizing, uh, having your local, uh, local municipality privatize your power, your power source as well. I'm not sure that that ex causes them to be outside of any public utilities commission. We'd have to look at that in this state. I didn't look at, look at that. I don't have the time. That's where these things may be relegated to a comment process, which is alluded to later in, the, in this discussion. And the private, pro the private nature of the application, you're kind of a captive audience, is another style of problem that you may have to address. But let's look at it in the more gener generic situation. They're looking, and the government said uh, the city government came and said, "But we aren't going to give this to the to the uh, law enforcement unless by warrant." And so there's another little problem there that you'd have to address as you read through this when you leave it on the judicial side of this thing. Understand, I'm looking at this thing. Well, it looks like they asked the wrong question, got the right answer because the right action would have been to challenge this before it became a decision. Where do you do that? Well, you'd have to go research where that's done, but they allude that that was possible. And the court instructs this whole matter to say, maybe it'd be better if you got, you know, if you, if you got the input from the community, you think? And I think that's a telltale sign that there was something they should have done or they had to do to make sure they weren't violating some other provision because they can't act outside of a constitutional limitation. The court then states that the privacy interest must be weighed against the government's interest in the data collection. So for all of you who are focusing on the radiation at this point, see, that's not even an issue. It has to do with search of the data. And this case was limited to data collection. Well, that happens to be then tailored onto whether, uh, what the governmental, uh, uh, what the government's position was of why that data collection is advantageous. You'll see one of the provisions is the bottom line. It's more, it's more profit, cost less. That's always an, that's always a public interest. And so you read through this article, you see the standards that are being applied. If you are someone who's against smart meters and you're not looking at this for those standards being determined and the good reasons why they're that way, in other words, this balancing provision, whether or not we agree with it, that's what they're that's what they're applying. You don't answer to those. You're not going to prevail. Now, I'm not having, I have no thought about one way or the other. It's just a fact. You don't answer to those. The government will win. The government be becomes your warden here. And this is the problem of police power. You have to learn how to look at that and be able to not deny their assertion, but be able to either make it ineffectual, undermine it, or show it's a pretext. The opinion here by the author is, and I have to, well, we'll just read it. Unfortunately, the Seventh Circuit was apparently unaware of or completely ignored the full history of the district court's case transcripts where the city of Naperville is open court, in open court demonstrated that rather balancing the privacy interests of consumers with city's goals to enhance its electrical grid operations, the city instead stated that the fifth, current 15-minute smart meter data collection interval was determined by balancing such factors as memory capacity and cost. The city of Naperville made no effort to ensure 
that smart meter data collection capabilities did not unreasonably infringe on the privacy expectations of the consumers and also performed no privacy impact assessment, a PIA, prior to the smart meter deployment. Listen to that clue. I'll read it again, so in case you were half listening, maybe. Did not unreasonably infringe on the privacy expectations of the consumer and also performed no privacy impact assessment prior to the smart meter deployment. Also, C9, the additional information related to balancing privacy interest on consumers. So let me just touch that a little bit. This is his opinion. But he talks, he opens this thing up with apparently unaware. Well, that's just a question. Let's look at what he states, what they didn't do. You have to understand when they didn't do it and they made a decision, it means that the public consented to the decision. And maybe that little the trick that he identifies, I think he's pretty sharp to pick this up, wasn't made a point in the proper time. And so you waive it as a public. That they didn't do the privacy impact assessment is not the argument today underneath a search criteria for the judicial determination of that issue. It's a challenge to the very order itself. You ask the wrong question, you get the right answer. He identifies a very important thing, two things here. One is that they didn't do it. Secondly, I, t I look at it and so they were required to do it. That's an administrative failure. That's you attack the order itself not whether or not the data collection was whatever, a search or not. Then you get back to the, the, then you attack the administrative failure to follow due process. Then, then when they reopen it now, then you go back in and you make sure that they're balancing the private interests of the consumers and the city to enhance the grid operation. You challenge whether or not it can be done as an alternative otherwise. That's where you start doing it at. You do that in that administrative process. You don't wait till it comes out with a decision. But the as long as no one knows there was no administrative failure, that decision stands. And that's why they're saying in this case, I believe they're saying it's related to this case. In this case, no one challenged the administrative procedures. And so the decision, the agency deciding, the commission deciding is given deference. You don't have standing there. And then you came and asked us for the wrong, we can only give you a question, an answer to the issue you brought, which is a searching of data. So I'm going to read some more. Just trying to, I'm trying to go through some stuff here to show you how you, I hope you appreciate how you start to, if you haven't thinking about it this way, this is how you start to think about it, actually. And I say that with some authority, because if I do it this way and we start addressing these problems, they do see changes. They may be as slow as molasses, but they're being changed, and they're getting changed in the proper direction. It's that little canoe paddle trying to turn the Titanic. But there we are hanging onto that canoe paddle. <laughs> in October 2013, this author is, this said, let me be clear, in October 2013, how long this guy has been sitting, look at all this energy this guy's putting into doing this trying to analyze this, and I'm looking at this thing saying, man, this thing was lost so long ago. All you have to do is show that they violated due process, find some administrative procedure. Where do you find that, folks? You find that in the Administrative Procedures Act of your state. You go there, you find out every agency is supposed to follow a procedure, you find the limitation, you find where they didn't consider it, you find where they went to dispute resolution, if you can, you bring that up and say, your whole process was, a con was illegal. Then you watch how they, you send them a notice and you see if they change it. If they don't, then you sue on that point. You don't sue the, all the stuff, all the minutia about, like I see the guy analyzing. I don't want to discredit. He's analyzing this crazy thing like crazy. It's too late. And yet it needed to be done and wasn't, and that's your in. You just have to be able to write that down. And so on October 2013, I've been doing this for a long time, he has, I wrote a blog article on the website documenting how the city of Naperville failed to consider the privacy interests of its residents during smart grid implementation. I need to interject. I was going to read this through, but I need to If it's already implementing, he's too late, even though he's seen a valid in viol a violation. That's when you write the letter. Even in implementation, they're doing that right now, and my colleague wrote a letter, and now they're having to have another meeting, even though they're trying to implement it. Because what they're doing is they're implementing crime, actually, when you get right into it. 
But no one understands it that way. Until someone makes that note, that letter, writes that simple letter that identifies it this way. Doesn't complain about lots of stuff. Just to listen, there's a provision right here, the black and white copy and paste. It says you did that you did this and that violated this and therefore you violated this savings clause, this unless prohibited by. You could bring this all back to the beginning or I'm going to sue to, to stop you and join you. Not a lawsuit because I get damages. No, I'm going to sue to shut you down and bring this thing back by a court order. And I'll tell you, folks, if you do those right, those injunctions right, you can tell the court to tell them to do it a certain way. You can get it back in the law about how they're supposed to do it. The court can mandate what should be in that law that they failed to follow because it wasn't there to guide them before. They can now be put in there. The court can make the law. For all you all that don't think that the court can make law, they can make what ought to be there in an injunction. It doesn't happen at law. It doesn't happen in a, an act law case. And you're doing this for the for those similarly situated. That's everybody else that's that's done. At any rate, equity is pretty interesting in this regard. The power is there to do it. It's just I don't think anybody understands. And I am going. I'm gone into the judicial side. This is now where the administrative is identified that they failed due process and they won't fix it. That's when you go to an injunction to uh, stop the implementation, to enjoin it, to stop it. We're not talking about radiation, radiation levels, cell damage. We're not talking about all that stuff. We're talking about that the process that was used to implement it violated the Procedures Act, which it must, shall, regard due process and have a knowledgeable public. And when they're starting, you start identifying, this guy's identifying some pretty cool things. When they've done that, they've, di they've, they've taken you out of having a knowledgeable public. It's all, it ends up being a, an omitted, a fraud by omission as well. Go ahead, so I'll read. So during, the residents during smart grid Im implementation, I'm saying that's too late. It's not doesn't mean too late. It's too late to start talking about all the stuff. You need to now stop it, and you stop it by saying that there's no you know, there's no due process. There's been due process violations in the in the order to implement. You're focusing in on the commission that had the authority to do so, not the company. The company may may be brought in, but they're 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 they're, they're kind of being drugged by the nose too at some level. Going on in this art, the article mentioned. Quote, how, how, quote, a utility's goal to enhance its electrical grid operation must be balanced with the privacy interests of the consumer. I documented, this author documented, how that balancing was not done. These are bullet points, folks. As I'm reading this and this, I see this is a bullet point, bullet point, bullet point on an equity action to enjoin this whole implementation process. He goes on to say, I documented how that balancing was not done ever since the, and throughout the multi-year legal proceeding with NSMA, the people who did the lawsuit, in a legal proceeding, I was shocked. I, they didn't do an administrative proceeding before that to try and avoid this? Again, take the wrong action, get the right answer. No, that's action or question. You can do them both. Do them wrong, folks, and you get the right answer each time. You'll be screaming and yelling about all the rights you got violated. Ever since and throughout the multi-year legal proceedings with NSMA, the city has continued to deny any privacy concerns with smart meters at all. So how can a court at this juncture declare the consumer privacy interests have indeed been balanced against its promotion of legitimate governmental interests? I'll answer that question. When the commission decided that's the case, when it didn't, and no one was in there with the proper proof, the court gives deference to the outcome of that decision, not your continued uh, whining about it. That's why. It's balanced between the decision and their authority to make the decision now. And there's no record that was brought before the court to say, they completely disregarded what we did present as proof, evidence. Not your opinion of it, but the proof. Which means you had to be there. And when you weren't there, you get this outcome. You get what they want, and you're going to continue to complain about it. Again, no disregard to this guy. I see what he's written. He's got himself a case. Someone's got a case. It's not what the NSMA did. But, at any rate, it doesn't matter. Who listens to the guy behind the woodshed? Limitations of the court ruling. This is what I actually picked up on when I read through this. Limitations of the court ruling. Because this is telling me something. I don't know about it tells anybody else when I read it here. This is telling me something of, of the wrong, how this uh, wrong question came out. 
and they gave, were given the right answer. Although the SMA group lost its, on its appeal, the, quote, the judges stressed this decision does not give an automatic green light to other cities and utilities to harvest data as they see fit, as the judges said, collecting data shorter individuals or making the data readily accessible to police or in other city officials outside the utility could trigger further litigation and court review under the Fourth Amendment. The court also seemed to have some sympathy for the predicament of SMA members where it stated, quote, Naperville could have avoided this controversy and may still avoid future uncertainty by giving its residents a genuine opportunity to consent to the installation of smart meters as many other utilities have. I've just told you many other utilities have, through their commissions, have violated their APAs. That's an implementation side. They're saying you should give your residents a genuine opportunity to consent. That's your end to say, wait a minute, though, that consent's come from an order that was invalid underneath your administrative procedures. That little section right there, their court showing this is limited, tells you, tells me something, you could kick this all the way back to the beginning and invalidate that decision. Where it didn't do certain things. They said they would give a genuine opportunity to consent. That means there's due process failure, folks. Did you, did you, do you hear that? by giving its residents a genuine opportunity to consent is not a meaningful opportunity which is required under the APA. And that consent can come through dispute resolution. And if you can attack the dispute resolution as improper because it didn't fit itself within the pro unless provided for provision, in other words, it did violate things in you that the Constitution protected, you open this thing right back up. And I haven't talked once about radiated harm. I haven't talked about once about pulse. I haven't talked about once about concentration. I haven't talked once about search. I haven't talked once about privacy concern. Nothing. I've identified that they use an improper procedural process, and they couldn't get a, a genuine consent. They provided no genuine opportunity. If they provided no opportunity, where was the notice, see, folks? They're telling you they you didn't get a genuine opportunity. I get to now check, did they give us a proper notice? What did I say due process is reduced down to our commercial status? Notice, opportunity, time, and place. Notice of the problem, opportunity to respond to it, a place to respond, and a time to respond. Once they run out of the place, they give the place and the time, and you didn't come in, they agree that you got your stuff. They gave, they gave you what you need. This court's saying that maybe you didn't get that opportunity. They're given a presumption of notice but because no one came in to challenge it. But maybe they, you, the notice they gave didn't give an opportunity. That failure of opportunity can also come in the failure of a notice to disclose these things. All this is required by the APA. So those of you that think we're living in an administrative world and all said and done, well, I looked at that, and I don't see that. Yes, it's it's another step I don't like. It's a can be a a pain, and and they've had since 19 the mid 1940s at least to have refined their system. So that's how far behind we are. But it's here to be looking for the savings provisions. Here to re, you want to know be a constitutionalist. You really want to know how to do that. Then you go look within the Constitution what you were supposed to be protected in, and you identify they failed to do the administrative procedures correctly which means you, they failed lawful and meaningful due process, then you bring in all those things they violated in you. Now you show that there was a violation in doing that. Now they have a problem. It's not just complaining about the fact that the APA didn't follow the procedures. You have to bring for them what they didn't do. This guy gave you a list. Those of you who want to fight smart meters, this guy gave you the list. He also tells you, don't go this way. Don't, don't sue on a data privacy thing. Why? Because that's actually handled before you got to the decision, before implementation. What I've explained is even despite and after implementation, you can, you can bring it back. You can bring it all back. It's not on your opinion. though. It's you understanding what you're up to. It's knowing the battlefield, knowing what was required, and talking the substance of the law that you see, which is the objective basis you now can use. Otherwise, you have no basis. 
is, I guess I just said another nugget. All I've been telling y'all for as much as for as, as little as little um, ears that seems to hear this are. The, the, I know I talk fast. So I'm sorry. But you put when you play this back, put it on half speed or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say, folks. It just comes out. It, it's not. It, it's not a. It comes out like I said. It comes out like light, it, it, but it has to then go into mass, and mass is a little bit more. It takes a little bit longer to move it. A little more time working on it. But that's you going to work. That's you not being overwhelmed. That's you being able to listen. If you haven't heard it before, listen how I'm parsing this thing through, how I, I put things in a certain pl place. I look for uh, failures even in the analysis or in, uh, irrelevancies. I say, if they're irrelevant, I don't deal with it no more. I look, let me look at the important stuff. And I pull out the important stuff and I say, okay, let's now apply it. And let's take some clues from the judges. They're telling people stuff. And now apply that. And I don't know about y'all. I don't know what you think about how I do this, what you hear, or what you're not here, whatever. I don't know about what you think about me and what I do here. As I'm, I'm kind of rethinking what I just said to you. I'm strongly suggesting you understand, start to really understand what I'm saying. Don't argue with me. Don't let your eyes roll back, even if I'm talking too fast. Figure out a way to slow what I'm doing down. Start documenting what I'm doing. You can go after these things. The law is there. Even the corrupted statutes protect you in, in lots of places. I, don't, I can't say everywhere because, I mean, there's some new stuff that's really come out that's kind of a pain but uh, to look at. But uh, as we were reading, I was looking at a colleague on the um, implementation of a, a 2017 law in a state that purports to control forest operations. As we looked at it and as it was being... Uh, a, purported to apply to fire it's not applicable to fire so someone's lying and we're going to we're going to we're going to expose that and so this is how really you got to look through you got to have a you have to have a solid critical mind to, to look at this and the failure the the continued whining i would ask you to look at yourself and say well maybe i've succumbed to 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 that and not actually having that critical mind i i i'm i'm now memeified uh, I would rather just kind of go with the flow of the, uh, uh, oh, I'm part of the resistance because I, I, I whine about it. No, it, it's not. And, and, I, and excuse me, for a couple of people, I haven't got to your emails this week. It was uh, kind of intense. I, I tried to do it last night. I just couldn't I just couldn't do it. As I said, the word resistance. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, I'm not so sure I didn't uh, about that. We'll see. Uh, that seems to be picked up uh, by a, uh, by a, it's, been, it's being fractionalized now. That word being part of the resistance, but you are, you know, and I'll say it. Uh, you know, if you're listening to my voice, you're part of an actual resistance, but only when you get involved. And that's my condition, my problem with going into that that statement. Being part of a resistance, folks. Are you? Are you just are you just sitting there in a big pile of like a speed bump, let people drive over you? I'm talking about being an answer to the harms and the wrongs that you see. And, and I suppose I'm, I'm in, uh, really in error on the promotion side of that. People like to get into being part of stuff, and people like to be uh, part of a avant-garde nobility of sorts, uh, avant-garde action. They want to be uh, you know, leading, you know, leading their own way. They want to believe that they're taking action and uh, being the knowledgeable res uh, resource, being the example of... of whatever they think they're doing but I look out without any uh, without any hesitation do I say nor without without any insult intended uh, most of y'all are not and in some regard I have to say all y'all are not but it all depends on what you're after it really does depend on that and I don't make those decisions but so here it is in this uh, whatever I I just read through you get the link here I just point out to you a bit of how I parse through no, these notices to us looking I give this guy all the credit in the world for being sticking with it all this time he's absolutely on it but I think this is an again without judgment I think this is an ignorance of the process that got everything to here and not realizing that it was a violation and how to check that in the beginning even coming late to the party if you will being a party crasher and then stopping the nonsense that came up that looked like it was everyone having a good time, which was actually just a setup for the takedown. 
it's like you never give up, folks. This is what this is about. They, they can come with all the sweet words. They can come with all the, uh, the, the color of the authority. But it's just a color. It's not an authority. And let me, so I tweeted out something to just to, just to get the idea out of responding. Who sent, uh, Gary L. sent this story out, so how I was able to see it. And what it came to me to send back was, if this is a requirement, and that Naperville, quote, perform no privacy impact assessment, PIA, prior to smart meter deployment, close quote, likely there is an APA requirements to meet such as unless otherwise provided. If so, it appears the NSMA asked the wrong question and got the right answer. Folks, well, that's what I said right after I got the, this article. Then I went back and read it a lot closer because I saw things in it that I thought I wanted to talk to you about. But the core of this thing shows that there was something required. This author who's been with this this whole time saw that something wasn't done, but nobody understood how to shut the process down when they completely failed to do that. And the court comes back and says, if you want to give a genuine opportunity, you ought to do that. I'm telling you, that's a statement that you were not given an opportunity uh, that was consistent with the level of that meets the, the term, the adjective, meaningful. That's enough to defeat the process right there. You have to have a meaningful hearing, a meaningful presentation, a meaningful opportunity, meaningful this, meaningful. You hear me talk about this periodically and all the time. Now, I'm always using that, those words within the context of the administrative procedure. The problem is, if it's a problem, is you have to identify how it was not meaningful. And a failure to do a requirement that's sitting objectively in the law everyone wants to wants to disregard or, or dis, not give force and effect to is how you take them out, really simply. The only other thing I can imagine that comes up when you do that is you have to show how, and this is why I say you go to your constitutional rights, and you go to the things that this gentleman has listed that were violated in you. It's not just that they violated that provision. You can't just say it wasn't a meaningful opportunity. You have to say, and this is, the compre this is how they press you with this. I'm not liking this, but this is what you have to do. You say it's not meaningful, but then you have to tell them what was violated in you when they disregarded that. Here's the point. You have an objection. It has to have a good reason. You can have an objection without a reason. They disregard it. If you aren't harmed by this, we don't, why, let's keep going. We've got things to do. We've got, we got, we got meters to install. You know, we've we got efficiency to have. We got a technocracy to impose, and the crickets allow all that. So that's the due process side, right from the state, uh, the state side of this administrative procedure side, uh, looking at the commissions not fulfilling it. The court, I think, came back and actually gave them the answer in part. There's more there in there, but they didn't talk about it. Why? Because that wasn't given to the court to decide, and they probably may not have decided it anyway because of the way the focus of the case. They asked the wrong question, and they got the right answer. And so it translates to a failure of privacy rights, when in fact they didn't do the assessment that was required in the due process, and that's how they got They took your privacy rights. If you can understand this dynamic, dispute resolution processes take your rights. I've been telling you this for years. And those of you that don't engage in, or engage wrongly, watch your rights disappear. They go right down the drain. And I've been trying to, best I can do, explain to you how, how to avoid that. How, how to start to prepare so that you're not surprised by this stuff, that you can respond. That you become meaning, you're, see, they have to give you meaningful process. Your response has to be meaningful. Otherwise, it's disregarded too. And when you start looking at that level, whatever this balance that's going on, they've got real things that they're trying to do that if you're not meeting the need, the expectation, by some reason, you, you if it doesn't reach the level it needs to be, then why should we regard it? Is part of how they're working this. At any rate, we'll go back to the same thing. Crickets is not a good thing. Or as much as I, I chuckle at the cricket stopping fun phrase from behind the woodshed here, uh, it's not what I really want to do. The crickets, stomp on the crickets here would be just stomp on the clueless. That's like clubbing a baby seal in the head, isn't it? And that's what we are until we, until we grow up, I suppose. 
and they don't do that no more. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it could be pretty sick sometimes. I try to keep it as light as I can. Reports show FDA manipulated and ignoring science on Kratom. So today, apparently, we're doing this as APA, Administrative Procedures Failures. I'm trying to show you how to do that. I'm not reading these stories for the stories. I'm reading for the stories, what they tell us, the notice they give us. If, we're, if we have the eyes to see, and if you're listening to me, you have the ears to hear. And if you don't, that, that's not fine, but don't, don't take offense. Just figure out what you need to hear what I'm saying. I mean, it's just, if you have no purpose in the purpose in the world, I guess I'm, again, I'm speaking to nobody. Now I'm, I just, I think about that, no purpose in the world. What do, what, what are we supposed to be here for? But see, it's even beyond what I want to do. We have an oppression that's hurting people, hurting me, hurting you. And I don't, in a way, I'm uh, not too intelligent, to, more intelligent than to figure out what the, that I'm doing, what I'm doing. I don't know what else to do. But I haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater. I haven't embraced a bunch of nonsense to do. I haven't gotten with a bunch of people that think they know. Uh, not that I don't get together with people. I only, I only kind of stay with people that we can work in through and start seeing, again, the, the, the Titanic turning with what we do, even though we're using a canoe paddle to do it. That's the people I work with. And I suppose the people I'm not working with and we don't hear much about, they're still experimenting. I'm kind of done with all that. Doesn't no disregard to anybody who's doing something that does work, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about anything that does work much. I hear a lot of the complaints. I see people people walking into walls. I see the the, the swamp monster jump up and scare them and and have their way with them for a while, or maybe completely. But I see very few people looking ahead to say, "Listen, we we got to we got to chart a course that's not going to run into that darn." that darn uh, iceberg. For as hard as that going to be, for as, as close as it's going to be a call to do, I really have to find a, a place to put my, my oar. i got to put my oar, and we're going to have to put it and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it in one direction to try and keep our society, which means each one of us, from suffering what we have allowed upon us. Getting back, another report shows FDA manipulating. Well, that's fraud. And so I don't. You're just not going with the opinion. You say they're manipulating. You have to then show what is the model here. But that didn't. That isn't conducive to the genuine opportunity to respond when they misinform you. Non-disclosure. When the requirement is for a disclosure of the to the public, full disclosure. Go find that in your rule. Don't uh, don't take a mic. Go find that in the statutes. Go find that in the decision. Go find that it's required that they do this. That they can't lie to you. If you can't find it in your federal, you can't find it in the far, in the far, in the uh, penal statutes. Then go find it where there's, they're supposed to give you notice, opportunity, time, and place, and that has to be genuine. It has to be meaningful. When they omit to tell you something that wasn't meaningful notice, you can shut the whole thing down because of that. But it's not on your opinion that it didn't happen. It's the proof. So right off the title, I see in here a way to get at this. If you can prove, I'm going to assume they can prove it. When you go read through this, the peer-reviewed documentation concerning. 44 deaths from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, has cited to persuade the Drug Enforcement Agency, Administration, excuse me, the Drug Enforcement Administration, to place natural Kratom on the federal government's Schedule One list of illegal substances discloses errors and omissions on the part of the FDA that the American Kratom Association, a.k.a., claims can only be seen as, quote, deliberate. Big claim here. But if you can back it up, you need to go make the record for that. Let me offer to you here that uh, when you do something about dis- sub- uh, failed to di- dis- when you have errors, mere errors, you, that's where you again have to show that the error was a meaningful one that materially prejudiced your rights or your whatever property, whatever, whatever you have is a protectable interest. You have to bring that if it's a mere error, an omission. You also have to then say how the omission of that information was relevant to the subject matter, and then you also have to show that its 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 um, observation would be material to the determination. And if you're not speaking like this in this order, 
you're likely not going to be read in your documentation. And I don't mean about talking lots and lots and lots, because you start out with a short sentence, and if you have to supplement that, you attach that later. We're, we're, again, you, you just give the short, everyone only can read in two minutes, so, or not 20 seconds, or whatever the heck it is they are. So you've got to give everything, you've got to, you've got to punch them pretty fast, pretty hard, with what it is. Now you have an omission, an omission that was substantial to the, uh, materially affect the substantial rights and prejudice of my rights. Now you have a statement that starts to, to get some traction. This company, is, uh, this, uh, this association, is saying that they are analyzing a numbers of things. They have an interesting way, too, you analyze these, that you're ex being ex shown and exposed to how the agency misinterprets, knowingly, has to be knowingly misinterprets, when you can find it says something else and they're coming up with the wrong answer, they knowingly misinterpret to come to what I would say would be an outcome. That's the process. That's that dispute resolution process. Actually, you're seeing the evidence of the process. See, I'm not talking about what the harms are here. I'm talking about you can identify the process that they're doing when they start to negate what the law requires. That's what dispute resolution does. Where prohibited, but when less prohibited, means you have to be there to show it was prohibited. And if you're not, they win. I don't like it, but that's the that's it. That's how that works. They get the shoe they get right in the door, right that that fast and that easy. And as I'm thinking about this, there's so much to read on this. It's interesting what they don't look at. But if you read this this article, you start to see how a group of attorneys for this association has delineated the things you can use that as a model to go look at every other thing you do, whether it's state or federal, in the in the imposition of comment periods and the imposition of information and the synthesis that they're supposed to do and how they don't give a meaningful interpretation for this is another due process violation that you could go to a court and you enjoin. What we're finding out is that when you document in short form, just the bullet points of the failures to the due process, that backs the agency or the administration off. They don't come to that determination. But we see that in the in the coordination with the agencies. They deny to meet with us, but they don't disregard our our uh, our demands for coordination together with a statement identifying, in uh, summary form at least, how the, they do they violate a due process. Since we've been doing that, we don't have any uh, plans or any rulings that come out. Why? Because when you're substantial in your uh, in your assertion of their failure they realize that that's going to be a win in the court. They don't want to go and be embarrassed. So here, what am I saying? You don't even have to, you've set it up and you do it clearly and correctly. They don't want to challenge that. Because this whole process, they're trying to get by transparently. And I hope you appreciate what I just said there. That's a big deal. They don't want people to see them. The fact that you're there calling it out right, correctly, you'd be the example of the right way to do it, is totally not what they want. Absolutely not what they want. But anyway, as I would read this, uh, this was an interesting thing that goes through and explain point for point how certain things were done. To me, that would just we go restate this in the aspect of the APA requirements. We say because of these omissions, these omissions were critical in the material determination of what was going on, and uh, would give in force and effect would likely not allow what they've done. Now you have a statement that you can go stop this. Now I'm, I'm hitting Kratom. Folks, I could care less about Kratom. This is not about what I think, though. This is about looking for evidence that, they te that we're told, the news has noticed, evidence of the uh, self-inflicted wound that we do to ourselves because we choose to be crickets. If we're even doing that much. I give you credit for saying crickets if, if there's really nothing going on. At least you're paying attention to decide not to. Otherwise, you're clueless. You're helpless to yourself. No wonder. What's your complaint then? I guess maybe that's why you're complaining. This gets back to that thing I talked about last week. More and more permission from the government. You have to get more and more permission. No, no what's happening is the only reason why that happens is not because of the government. It's because you're ignorant. You're ignorant of the subject matter. I know, but you just turned it, you didn't want to hear it, so you turned it away. Oh, I'm not ignorant. Oh, okay, fine. But you are. We're all ignorant in something. And in these, these matters of formal governmental inter, inter, intervention, where their people are in the system trying to take you out and taking you out daily. 
is is the problem, is what I'm talking to, that I'm saying you're ignorant of that. And if you weren't ignorant, I listen, anybody that I've, I've got, I get the emails, you start to figure it out, you start telling me. I don't know why you wouldn't. Like I said last week, why wouldn't we be working together in order to empower each other even more and faster, like exponential empowerment? But because I hear a silence, I'm going to continue to go with that's what's going on. I look out in the world, I see the same problems. I see this. Uh, all the facts are in this last report with Craig Tom to show how they could have opened that whole procedure back up, and they're not. They're just complaining about it, writing stories about it. Uh, another imp imposition of the government where they have no authority, and what I can prove by the bag of law that we have at Jefferson Mining District on the highways, and I'm just going to go through this kind of quickly, uh, a story that came out, and this is how we allow the government to do what they do without stopping it, and without looking at the proper authorities to start putting pressure where they're supposed to be, we'll find out they're going to be derelict, so we've got to get ready for that too. It's not, it's, again, it's not so, there's no silver bullet on the first action. You hope you can do it, but likely not. As a society, we have been weaned away from principle, weaned away from objective basis, weaned away from the law of the land. We talk about it, oh, we're going to assert it, but we don't even know what the first thing about it is or how to do it. Federal officers establish unconstitutional checkpoints on road to Burning Man. Now, I entered this, this broadcast talking about access of miners into the forest so that they have fire. And then when you go, it took five minutes, and that was taking a long time because I just want to verify, make sure it had, it had changed, and the, because the question came up to me by a rule, an order number, and I don't deal with order numbers, I deal with the law. And how the and looking for authority. Well, what come go through five minutes? I find out. Well, there's no authority for that order to block everybody out. Is the same application here? People are ignorant of what the law says. And the story and the clues are in the story itself. Federal officials establish unconstitutional checkpoints on the road to Burning Man. Well, they're not just unconstitutional. They're they're felonies. It's not my opinion, folks. I just I tell you where to go look on all this stuff. This is, oh boy, the Finicum thing comes up pretty quick here too, as well. But I'm not going to go there. Let's go back. Man, Burning Man message boards have been uh, been on fire all week as people being reported being stopped on flimsy pretext by Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs officers in the tiny town of Nixon, one of the last stops on the narrow, quiet rural roads that six to eighty thousand sixty to eighty thousand people use to access the Black Rock Desert home to the Burning Man Festival, which opens to the public this coming Sunday. I guess they're doing it. Nope, this isn't a week-and-week-old story. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Don't even know. You know. Officers pull... See, again, I don't really care about the context about that where it's... It, folks, this is about a condition. If this happened this week, shame on you. If this happened last year, shame on you. This was, this was addressable. This is addressable. Well, who's going to do that on their way to Burning Man? They're just going to put up with the nonsense. But, you know, I'll tell you how. I'll show you how it's nonsense. The officers pull cars over on flimsy and even manufactured pretexts, such as dim license plate lights, and then ask to conduct a search. If the drivers refuse, canines are brought to the site to made to alert on the cars, giving officers a pretext to conduct a search. Well, that on its face is very difficult. I don't even know. I don't want to be involved with that, but that would be a difficult one to do. But let me just go to the authorities now. They gave me enough information that I can already tell you a couple things that are going on. First of all, it's that people travel on the highway thinking that they uh, are subject to the motor vehicle code in the commerce. But, uh, that's a harder one for people, so I'm going to step past that one. Let's go to their authority. Where is their authority? Of this? Uh, who do they say this was? The Bureau of Indian Affairs. Where's their authority limited? What's their authority to do? What are they doing on the highway? Oh, let's look at the highway, because we're talking about law of the land. Is the highway a Bureau of Indian Affairs jurisdiction? Is the highway the Indians' jurisdiction? I'm talking about a state highway here. As you go and read through the story, you find it's a state highway. What does that mean, folks? That means it's your highway. The state is for the people. What does that mean, as I've talked to you before? It's a disposed federal public domain. To whom? All the legitimate users, which are those that are not making crime, but they're not in commerce. And the crime we're talking about is where your destination is going to be. You don't intend to do a murder. 
or things like that, not the use of the highway. The jurisdiction is under state law. That's why it's called a state highway. Where's the jurisdiction of the BIA in that course? Where's the jurisdictions of the Indian tribe that they resort to enforcement through this little town? Where is it, folks? I, I think when you look, you'll find it doesn't exist in either the feds or the Indian reservation. It's a state highway that goes through there. It's a thoroughfare that has been determined to be disposed into state law. Where's the federal authority to implement state law? I couldn't find it. I looked around. I could not find a federal authority to do that. What I do know is Title 43 U.S.C. 1733 says the law enforcement over those that area is in the state with the sheriff, and any federal uh, any federal authority is only through his office by contract of enforcement for state law. I didn't hear anything in this article tracking down that authority. I had I hear no art, art, no authorities in any of these articles actually, so you have to. This is the other thing that perpetual ignorance that they put on us. We don't even ask about it. When I look at the federal law underneath the Secretary of Interior's authority, from which the BIA is controlling another group of people in the Indian reservations, there is no authority within the Secretary of Interior to take control of anything on the highway that's been disposed, the state highway. They would, the only way they have a right is through the sheriff's office. So who went to the sheriff to say, why aren't are you allowing these people to use pretext to do drug stops? Why are you backing up the commerce of that highway for hours, folks, it says. I have enough in these articles to show you absolute crime is going on, and no one crickets to this, crickets, because it's a point of opportunity for what? Whatever, control, behavioral controls, keeping you from bringing your drugs in and all whatever they're doing. Because why? They have a federal authority. You're not supposed to have marijuana on a federal authority, right? Well, folks, it's not a federal authority. So now what? Why do I hear the whinings about this and the integration with the problem instead of the salvation of it, which is the resort to the law that says they don't have an authority? How hard was that to have come up with? Jefferson Mining District, download the Highways and Trails Act. You'll find the law relevant to Oregon there, which is the same foundational law you find in all the 11 western states. The highways are not under federal authority. They may be monitored by the federal authority, but they can't be interfered with. The BIA and the Indian tribe that claims to have an authority through that town that's trying to regulate that that highway underneath their laws are committing felonies. They're also violating your rights. I don't remember now if, if Nevada has yet got uh, marijuana or, or cannabis or not in California. I don't remember. I didn't look at that. My point is that this is a state authority, and they can only be doing state law because the land underneath that is disposed to the state, and it becomes state road law, not motor vehicle law, for all the users going to a terminus that's lawful. Are people following what I'm saying here? Do you really listen? You hear me and nod? Uh, uh, do you know? Do you know where to go look and find out that our ignorance of all this is what causes all these people to suffer this oppression? And nobody in that place, nowhere, not even the sheriff, has brought up the fact that they're making crime on those highways. They're doing a violation, for those of you that like to re go read it, uh, Title 18, USC 241 and 242. Yeah, going on the highway to deprive rights, that's a big, big felony crime. You put, lots, put people away for that under federal law. Why do I even read this story? Is our ignorance as a society to keep us controlled because I'm going to hear crickets about who went after this one at all. They're just going to put up and shut up. All I'm dealing with is, is highway uh, land disposal, highway road law, folks. I'm not talking about your right to travel. I'm not talking about the right to, right to drive. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about your right to use the ingress and egress that was granted to people, made by people, as Congress mandated to the states to protect. Where's your sheriff? 
And I think because of our ignorance about this, we've allowed the type of society that goes about and, you, and the federal authority becomes this oppression. The state allows the oppression, which they become then the oppressor by accessory. All because no one wants to stand up and assert a simple thing. It's called the law. In this story, you'll hear about public land and public domain. There's a distinction. The public domain is conveyed. It's no longer under any federal authority. It's in state law. The officers of which have to enforce only state law. Why? Because that's a state state land. It's not state land in the context of the grant. It's state land as far as the obligation under the Enabling Act to protect that from encroachment and obstruction. I'll give you the number again. You want to go see this authority where the Secretary of Interior and the Secretary of Agriculture for all, all them uh, agents out there that think that they can close the federal highways not national service system roads, which are actually agency roads. I'm talking about the statutorily accepted roads and trails, which are not agency function. They all have existed in a certain state, depending on the statutory acceptance for those, which is typically between five to ten years. Once those roads existed unprotested by the federal government for five to ten years, depending on the state that they're sitting in, they statutorily are accepted and consented into highway or trail status protected under state law. Why doesn't anybody understand this enough to assert that? And why do I get grief? Or why does everybody just uh, nod your head and nod your head affirmatively like that? So that sounds like it's normal, but nobody imposed this on these people that are oppressing us. Set Title 43, USC 1733 is where you can go right, read the hierarchy, the BLM, the Secretary of Interior, the BIA, uh, the re people on reservations have no authority but through, for highways and law enforcement, for the highways, but through the Sheriff's Office and by contract. Why aren't we looking at it that way? Why has this become such a big hassle that we allow to be oppressed over and over? 60, 80,000 people suffering, none of which step up, is the crickets, folks. I just don't even, I don't even want to start now. I get beside myself how simple this really is. Will it happen on the street? Probably not. You get a whole bunch, 60 to 80,000, 10% of those people, folks, 10%, 1% of those people going at it correctly will stop that. 1%. The 1%ers, where are you? The 3%ers, where are you? Where are you? You understand what you would do if you understood what I understand and how to push it. And don't think I'm not without experience. I sued a federal forest district ranger when he blocked us out of our ingress and egress in our mind. You're not supposed to be able to do that, they tell you. Well, guess what? It ultimately was I didn't because the state court got in my way. But you know what? They removed the block to our mind. Why? Because they have no standing to do any of it. And they don't want to make that kind of a precedent. Where are you? Where's 600 people to, to go after this thing on Burning Man? Open your state highway up. Cause your sheriff to have to start to enforce the law. Stop the nonsense for next year. This is all over the country, though. This is a minor this morning. This is that over there. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said to open up uh, the possibilities for you all. Grimner, thank you very much for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and all that work for us and uh, any of you all that are re-mentoring the, pro the, the, the uh, broadcast thank you very much I'll be with you next week Tech Diffs or Nature Willing that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>